One of the most iconic fictional aircraft must be the UNSC's Pelican from Halo. It is a staple of the franchise and has a supporting role in most if not all Halo games. But as Master Chief is thrust through a time skip and enters the post-war period in Halo 4, a new model of Pelican has taken over. But this new Pelican has gone through some major design changes, and one in particular leaves me confused. The older Pelican had two cockpit designs, but both were accessed through the back. But the new D79 version has the pilot set in tandem bubble canopies that only access both from the outside. This is a significant design change that doesn't make much sense, especially when taking the role of the aircraft into perspective. So in this video I will highlight the pros and cons of different cockpit layouts, and why the D79 is worse than the predecessor. If we start with the new tandem design, where one pilot sits in front of the other, this designs allow for long thin ships with lower drag and better aerodynamic performance. This is why it's often used in fighter jet designs. It also allows for a smaller frontal surface. An aircraft with its main armament pointing forwards also risks retaliation fire from the front. The airframe can be made slimmer by seating the pilots behind one another, minimizing frontal area. This is one of the reasons that wheel roller tech helicopters use this layout. Another reason for this layout is visibility, as the crew members don't block each other's view. This is especially helpful with pivoting weapons as the gunner can focus on flying one direction, while the pilot can focus on flying in another. The side-by-side -side seating has different pros. It minimizes the need to duplicate controls as instruments placed between the pilots can be accessed by both crew members, making the cockpit simpler and cheaper. It also enhances the communication between the crew members, making non-verbal communication possible. One real-world example is the XB-52, the prototype of the famous B-52 bomber. The prototype has a glazed cockpit with tandem seating, but this was changed in the production model to a side-by-side -side seating. The reason was that the side-by-side -side arrangement increased the effectiveness of the co-pilot and reduced crew fatigue. So why do I believe the new Pelican has chosen the wrong design? The short answer is that it doesn't fit its role. For the longest time the Pelican had two variants, a transporter and a transporter gunship. The gunship used the tandem seat arrangement, while the transporter used the side-by-side -side layout. This meant both versions optimized the cockpit for the intended role, but the new D79 changes that. The only advantage the tandem seating enables in the Pelican is the increased gunner pilot visibility. The Pelican's airframe is wide and boxy due to the cargo room, so placing the seating in tandem doesn't increase the aerodynamic performance, nor make it slimmer or harder to hit. But the cons are still there. Duplicate flight controls, more systems and information for the individual pilot to keep an eye on, this increased the mental load on the individual pilot making prolonged transportation missions more strenuous, and throughout the Halo games, long transportation missions seems to be the Pelican's bread and butter. And then there's the environmental factors. The Pelican primary function is a ground-to-ground -ground or ground-to-space transporter. As such, it should be designed for deployment on UNSC ships. And here again, the new design runs into problems. Carrier aviation is not just designed for combat performance, but also for size and simplicity. Room and room for spare parts are a limiting factor on ships. We see this in the real world on the US Seahawk. The Seahawk is a Navy version of the US Army's Black Hawk helicopter, but the Seahawk is 2 inches shorter and that's before its rotor and tail are folded. And helicopters are not the only aircraft that is shortened to fit on carriers. The Sea Harrier is 4 inches shorter than its land based counterpart and could fold its nose to be a whole 4 feet shorter. Many other fixed wing aircraft are also fitted with folding wings to maximize the little space available on a carrier. We haven't seen this on any Pelicans, but it's not hard to imagine the wingtips of a Pelican could fold. Even though the new Pelican is a little smaller in all aspects, it could have been made a lot shorter if a side-by-side -side cockpit has been chosen. This could make storing more Pelicans on a single UNSC ship possible. Another notable effect of the new design is that access to the cockpit is only from the outside. This seems like a small detail, but I believe it to be a considerable detriment. The older version only had access to a cockpit from the cargo compartment, but this also meant there was always a way for the people in the back to contact the pilots. If the radio or comms went down, you could always walk up and ask them. It also helped if the pilots were wounded, a door in the back made it easy for the men in the back to drag the pilots out. On the new version, especially the aft cockpit, someone has to crawl on top of the pelican to lift the pilot out of their seat and carefully lower them down to the ground. This will make rescues harder and more time consuming. The new layout might make ejection seats easier to install, but they are not much use in space, and the new design makes ground rescue much harder, 
And it's not like ejection sheet ain't an option in side-by-side -side cockpits. There are plenty of examples from our time of side-by-side -side ejection sheet arrangements, such as the A6 Intruder and the Russian KA-52 helicopter. So are there any benefits to the new cockpit arrangement? Some weapons and aircraft systems could potentially fit better into the airframe. There are also more commonality between the gunship version and the transport version. This will help lower cost and make spare parts and maintenance cheaper and easier. But this would also be true if the side-by-side -side seating had been chosen. And we've seen plenty of attack aircraft successfully use the side-by-side -side seating like the F-111 and the KA-52. But even I have to admit there's one good reason to make the change, and that is gameplay. We first see the DE-79 Pelican in Halo 4, where we also get to fly it for the first time in main Halo campaigns. To make the change clear, the game uses the new design with open canopies to draw the player to the front seat. This is also clear in the level design, where the player starts in view of the open cockpits. The redesign also helps to show that time has passed. Now these are not canon reasons, but I can't see any in-universe reasons to justify the change to the Pelican. If you like these kinds of videos, then leave a like and consider subscribing.